It's going to be brief. I was asked to keep it like 15, 20 minutes. So you'll be out of here before 1230 and you can go enjoy your, your lunch just fine. Ezra chapter 8. Ezra. It's in the Old Testament. It's before Psalms. Perhaps you are not familiar with this book. Maybe you've never read this book. So Ezra chapter 8. Give you a little background on the book of Ezra and give you some history, some understanding of what's taking place. Maybe you're not sure of the timeline, the history, what's happening, you know, what's going on. So the, the book of Ezra, it's taking place after the captivity in Babylon, right? Remember, uh, Judah was conquered, they were taken into to Babylon. After the Babylonian Empire, the next reign or country that reigns is Persia. So we have now entered the Persian reign. And Cyrus, the leader of Persia, who was prophesied to let the people go back to Israel, has let people go back to Israel. So there's been a first group that went. Ezra was not part of that first group under Cyrus. He's going to go back uh, a little later. And so we're about to see Ezra depart. So that's where we are in your timeline, just so you're familiar with the history and where people are, where's Judah, where's Israel. That's, that's where the book of Ezra is. So some of you are like, yeah, obviously I knew that, but others of you may have never even heard of Ezra. So uh, it's important so everyone knows where we are in the timeline. Here in chapter 8, Ezra is um, gathering together and he's going to go back and it's interesting we have Ezra's lineage given to us and he was uh, and that's in, in chapter number 7 he's actually a descendant of Phinehas which we heard about this morning in the uh, Torah time so Ezra is his descendant and he's going back and in, in chapter 8 we're going to look at a couple verses. They're about ready to, to set off on their journey and on their trip. And the king has given them so many things. The king of Persia has given them permission to go back to, to the temple, back to Jerusalem. And he's given them treasuries uh, or treasure from the treasuries there in Babylon to take back to the temple of God. He's blessed them. God has blessed them even through this uh, Persian king to take back to Jerusalem for the temple. So he's received great blessing. So I just want us to get a little thought here from verses 21 through 23 of Ezra 8. Before we do, let's, let's pray and ask the Lord to open our eyes and our heart as we look at this portion of Scripture. Lord, I ask that you would... Uh, Give us understanding as we see your word, that you would speak to our hearts, you would speak uh, through me, and your word would go forth, that we would be changed. Lord, we want to meet with you. We don't want this to just be uh, some moments and pass the time, but we actually want to hear what you would have to say to us. So open our hearts, and then... May you show us how you want it to be applied to our lives as well. In the way in which we seek you, and the way in which we pray, and the way that we depend upon you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So chapter 8, verse 21, they're gathering together, they're about ready to leave. It says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. So here's what's happening. They're going back. There's a group of people going back to Jerusalem from Babylon. Now, it's not just a group of men in their 20s and 30s hiking back. 
It's a group of all people with their families, their little kids. You probably have elderly people all making this journey back to Jerusalem. 900 miles about is going to be their walking path. That's a long way to go. Now, with my dad in Tennessee, we often make trips to Tennessee. We load in the car. Thankfully, we're not walking. We load in the car and we drive down. To where my dad lives, it's about 600 and something miles. Drive time is like no, a little more than nine hours. You throw in the little kids, we get happy when we make it in 12. Right? You add the kids, it adds time. I gotta use the bathroom, gotta change the diaper, they wanna walk around, they wanna eat. It adds more and more and more time. Now you're talking about a whole group of people with children, elderly people, going a really long way. And you, when the more people you add, right? If you caravan, if you car, like, if you go on a trip and there's like three vehicles in the trip, it's bad enough because you have, you have to stay with the other van, and then that car needs to get off, and so now all three cars have to get off, and then you get back. It adds time and time and time. So here's a large group of people making a really long trip, right? Here they go. They're going out now they could probably use some protection. It's just them walking. Now the king has allowed them to go and take all these, uh, the gold and silver articles back to the temple. They have some valuables, but they also have a lot of kids and stuff with them. These are not necessarily military men. They could use protection. So human thinking would allow them to think, Ezra to think, you know what? I could ask the king to give us some, some assistance, some guards, some soldiers to go along and protect us. You know, when you're scared, when you are feeling weak or vulnerable, what is the thing to do? You find someone who is stronger to be on your side, right? I, um, I wasn't necessarily bullied as a kid, but I was definitely little. And so, uh, it tended to be picked on or made fun of. So what I would do is if you can make the big guy laugh, hopefully he won't hurt you, right? That was the goal. So you kind of get the big guy on your side and, and then you're okay. That's what we, we do reasonably. You, you have a big guy, okay, if another big guy comes, this big guy can take care of that big guy. So thinking wise, I could get some soldiers, some guards from the king. He would probably happily give them to me if I asked him for them. And they could walk all of us all the way to Jerusalem. They can protect us and our kids and all the elderly people will be protected. It's a great idea. But Ezra says, you know what? That doesn't go in line with what I believe about God and what I've told even the king about God. And you see that here in the next verse. He says in verse 22, so they're gathering together to, to, to fast and to seek the Lord because of this. For in verse 22, I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Because we had spoken unto the king, saying, so Ezra said, look, I had told the king this. The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. I told the king that God is for those who seek him. And we as the people of Israel know God and believe in this God. And we're seeking this God so therefore, God should be for us. We told the king, those who don't seek after God, God is not for them. So logically, if you think through it logically now, not just human thinking, but now logically, I, Ezra is saying, look, 
if God is for those who seek Him, and we are seeking God, then I must have faith in God to protect us. I shouldn't go to the king and ask for help because my help is in God. So what could have Ezra done? He could have asked for help. He could have easily gone to the king and said, we need help. He's sending us all this stuff. He could, have, he could have sent this stuff with us and He could have easily given us help. But there's a problem with that because in asking the king, he's no longer depending upon God. He's depending upon the king. His faith would then be upon the king to protect. He's seeking his favor. I think oftentimes we get into a bind and our next conclusion would be, it's okay, my king, my government will help me. Right? That's, that's a big thing even in America, right? Whew, I'm struggling. That's okay. I can go straight to the government to help me. And yet Ezra is saying, I can't do that because I've said the Lord will protect. I can't go to the king for that. My faith and trust cannot be on the king. My faith and trust must be on the sovereign king, God only. And that's where my faith needs to be. So that's why they've gathered the fast, to, to seek after the Lord. Also, there's a problem in asking the king for this because it gives a bad representation of God before, who the, before the king himself. In asking the king for this help, the king then could think, well, then I guess your God isn't as great as you say he is. If your God is going to be the one to protect you, he must not be able to if you need me to protect you. And me protecting you, you must be needing me. You must be needing my gods to help you. Ezra says, no, we, we don't want to give a bad representation of who God is. So I'm not even going to ask the king for help. I'm going to go to God. Now that's a big, that's a big task. I am, I am a scaredy cat. And I can't imagine being outside, you know, all day, every day, hiking 900 miles, I mean, having other people with me would give me a little bit of encouragement. But being out in some country that I've never been, among peoples that I don't know, would scare me. There's got to be great dependence upon this God to hike for months, for miles, and trust God to protect you and your kids and your wives and everyone else there. And so what do they do? They turn and seek God. So you know what? We're gathering together. We're about to take this journey. We've got to go, after, we've got, to, go to God. And it says there in verse 21, that we might afflict ourselves before our God. A great humility. This, this fasting, setting everything else aside, having affliction to yourself by putting other things away that perhaps might even be necessary or important to you. Putting those away because you realize that even those things that are important aren't as important as God Himself. We need God. We're about to make this journey. We need God. And they put everything else aside to seek God. To seek His favor. Because He will protect. He will provide for those who seek after Him. So they put all those other things aside and they said, God, we need You. And they go before God 
in faith. They believe what God has said and revealed about Himself, and so they ask Him to protect them. God, You want us to go back to Jerusalem, back to our home country. The time has been spent of exile. It's time to go back. And You promised to protect us. We want You to do that. And they have that faith in who God is and they ask Him. And they seek Him. We see what happens in verse 23. So we fasted and besought our God for this. And He was entreated of us. And then you see later in this chapter that God protected them and they arrived safely with all of their things. It says in verse 31, Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go into Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us. And He delivered us from the hand of the enemy. And such as lay in wait or in ambush, those that were ready to attack them as they were on their journey by the way. And we came to Jerusalem and abode there three days. And then on the fourth day, uh, was the silver and the gold and the vessels weighed in the house of our God by the hand of, of this person. So they, they brought all these things and they offered all these articles that they brought with them. They brought all of them safely through. They weren't plundered on the way. They weren't attacked on the way. God heard their prayer, answered their prayer, and kept them safe. That gives us hope that when we go to God in prayer, based upon who He is, the truths of which He's shown us from His Word and He's uh, convinced us of, there have been times where I know I've read certain verses and I think, oh, that's perfect. I get to pray that because of this. We go to God and we say, Lord, You have said this. I believe I'm asking you to work in this way because you have spoken this. And we ask Him in faith, trusting that He will do what we're asking Him to do because of what He's already said. And so Ezra was able with the people to come before the Lord and ask of Him to protect them because He promised He would and he did. He didn't need the king. He needed God. We're in such an awful situation currently, even in our own country, right? The answer isn't our king. The answer isn't any of our political leaders of any sort. It doesn't matter which side people are on. Neither one is really the answer. God is the answer. We want to see a difference. We want to see a change. We want to uh, uh, see God work and move in our hearts, in our church, in our city, in our country, globally. The answer isn't in some authority or government power. It's God. Not just in regards to our country situation, but think of even your own personal situations, right? At home, we all have issues. You know, hot water heater breaks, leaks. Uh, there's strife among some family members. There's um, financial struggles. There's a, a plethora of issues, and all of us have them. Not, any, not, not one of us is separate from problems. How often do we run to someone else before we run to God? Oh, I got huge problems. I know what I'll do. I'll call Dad. Oh, I got huge problems. I'll, 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 run, I'll run to my boss and we'll have that fixed up. And yet we never stop and say, you know what? God will fix this problem. Let me run to Him. 
And that's where we need to have our thinking change that I am going to run to God for any of my problems. I trust Him and I will depend upon Him instead of someone else or even myself. So may we take our issues, may we take our problems, may we take our burdens to the Lord. May we run straight to Him in prayer asking Him to take care of it for us. Let's pray. God, I thank You very much for this thought from Your Word. We thank You for how You worked in the situation for Ezra and the others that were traveling with him. I thank You that You have this recorded for us so that we can know that we need You. That we must depend upon You and You alone. No one else Nothing else, but just you. In Jesus' name, amen.